All right, Do yeah. Daniel Goldhaber, you are riding in a wave of new school horror movies that are that have some very you know solid uh, uh, titles. I really like the Conjuring movies, VHS series, Hereditary, It Follows, The Maniac Remake, etc. However, I believe Cam is the best horror movie of the decade. That's my opinion. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Yes. I saw the movie, and it was uh, nice to thank you for joining us, Isa. i uh, really glad that you uh, are here for this conversation. This movie not my socks off. It scared the bejesus out of me. That's amazing to hear. Yes. So I, I wanted to start with that. But, uh, uh, Isa, this is a question for you. Upfront or aggressive sexuality is kind of, for me, I think, scarier than physical violence. Why don't you think it's used as a device as much in horror movies? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that any time you're dealing with sex, it can bring up a lot of, um, a lot of anxieties or insecurities for people, um, which I think why it was so important for us with Cam to kind of present um, Alice's relationship with sex work as something that was kind of almost incidental plot. Like, she just is a sex worker. She likes what she does. Um, she's very passionate about it. Um, but we, we definitely spent a lot of time kind of confronting the scenes in which we do display her sexuality uh, or nudity and kind of discussing, you know, making sure that every time that we were, you know, slightly sexually explicit or Alice was performing some sort of sex act, that it was also very, um, very tied to uh, the, the thematic elements of the film. It was very important to us like not to have just um, kind of gratuitous, uh, gratuitous sex just to be flashy, you know? So we really we really um, worked a lot to try to, to always tie it into the theme. All right, another question for you, Isa. Do you believe that how we love each other reflects on us as a society? Mm, tricky question. Um, I, think, I think absolutely. I would say that, you know, how we deal with sex, how we learn about sex, how we uh, educate people about sex absolutely kind of reflects where we are in the moment as a society. And I think that it's important, especially nowadays, to have more conversations about not just sex, but also the different types of sex that people are into, the types of kinks and fetishes that, you know, people do want to explore. I think as a cam girl, something that was really interesting to me was that a lot of my viewers were in intimate relationships. Uh, outside. You know, I think that we have a view of... Um, maybe pornography consumers as kind of like isolated, lonely men. Um, but in fact, many of them were married. Many of them had partners. And they came to me simply to express aspects of their sexuality that they were not comfortable um, talking about with, with their intimate partners. And so, and, and I, found that, I found that very difficult because I kind of in a way felt like a Band-Aid. Uh, um, and I think that having those discussions, um, you know, more openly in society and learning how to not shame each other for our desires is, is really important. And uh, just to follow that yeah. up, I mean, I think that that something that uh, that's kind of worth uh, mentioning is that you know if you look at kind of technological innovation or especially innovation in media over the last hundred years, you kind of want to see where tech is going or how it's getting there. Look at what's happening in the sex space, um, you know. And I I think that that uh, camming absolutely kind of was pioneering this form of live streaming that we see now, you know, like one of the first, you know, groups of people to live stream and make money from it were cam girls. Mm. And, and I think that, 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 that's just something that we were also trying to engage with in this movie. Interesting. So Dan, tell us about your lead Madeline Brewer and how during the audition, you immediately said, this is the one. Yeah. I mean, she was just, uh, she, it was, it was so extraordinary to have an actor of her caliber, you know, consider this role and have the political passion for this material that she came to it with, um, while also having, again, you know, her obvious talent. So, Isa, how do you go from meticulous research to then get sur getting a little surreal with the material? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love genre film. I love horror. I love thrillers. And I think for me, it was most important to bring an audience not only inside a Campbell's experience, but also to get them to empathize with a sex worker and to kind of um, I, I wanted them to be rooting for a sex worker to return to sex work. And for me, genre is such an incredible tool because it allows you to kind of place somewhat subversive messages in, like, really digestible packages. Like, I wanted Cam to be fun. I wanted it to be exciting. I wanted it to be colorful. I wanted it to be, like, the type of movie that I would want to go see, which is, you know, like, anxiety-producing uh, thrillers. And so um, 
So bringing in those, those kind of surreal elements, bringing in the supernatural elements, bringing in the horror aspect of it, um, it felt, felt very natural to me and, and was, re- was really fun. Cool. So, Dan, uh, Isa is your friend going back 10 years. She helped produce your, your high school play. How did you guys come together and decide that you wanted to explore this this, uh, this universe for your debut? Why, why this subject? It kind of just really came about naturally. You know, uh, Isa originally contacted me because she wanted to make some, some uh, pornography to sell on her show and thought that we could maybe do something that was a little fun, a little bit different together. I think, you know, she thought I was a good filmmaker and... And, and so we did that, and for me, that was really exciting because it was, it was this really cool challenge to, like, come into directing a porn and try to kind of find a way to still make it a film that I felt some degree of creative ownership over. And, it, you know, the process of doing that and then around the production, you know, spending time with Issa while she was preparing for her shows, seeing the way that she was engaging with her guys, seeing the kind of artistry and the craft and the passion that was going into what she was doing was really compelling to me. And so we started talking about, you know, hey, should we do a documentary about this? But, hey, no, maybe a documentary isn't quite right for us as filmmakers. You know, and then, you, again, we, we're, we're, both, we're both fans of genre film. We're, we're both fans of fun movies. And so we thought, let's, let's take these ideas that we're working with, these ideas of, of kind of, you know, sex work as work, these ideas of digital identity and its corruptibility, um, these ideas of kind of, you know, the hyper simulation of living a digital life and let's make a movie about it. And, and it was just, it, it emerged really naturally. And again, we're, we're, we're kind of, you know, we've, we've always been collaborators. And so it just, you know, we started talking about it and then, you know, a couple months later there was a script. That's so cool. So Isa, what kind of movies, what kind of genre movies do you guys like to watch together or, or just uh, talk about? Um, we, we're big, uh, we're huge Cronenberg fans. Yeah, oh. Cronenberg for us is a huge inspiration, especially the way he handles body horror. Little video um, drone going on yeah. in this movie. Here yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. We watched, I think while I was writing, I probably watched video drone like six times. Ooh. Like, <laughs> 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 um, I love, I love Cronenberg. That was a huge inspiration. Um, we also, two films that really inspired us a lot were, um, Whiplash and Black Swan oh. as well. And kind of the, um, the overwhelming passion of, of, it's almost like a sports movie, and trying to trying to bring that ambition into Alice was was really key as well. Because when we're talking about kind of trying to destigmatize sex work, you know, you don't really question why Miles Teller is a drummer, or or that drumming is something to do in Whiplash. You don't you don't question the ballet is something to do in Black Swan. And so we we were looking at those movies about passionate artists and saying, what if we treated sex work with the same way? We really think that that would lend itself to a movie that felt like you know. That, that it was just treated as a given. And, and so we were also kind of looking at, at, at those kinds of stories. And, and then, you know, obviously there's, there's a Lynchian, uh, there's a Lynchian influence as well. And, 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 um, but ultimately, you know, I don't particularly come from a genre background. And so one of the really fun challenges of this movie was like for me to figure out how to, you know, I was kind of figuring out how to make a genre movie or even kind of what I felt I thought a genre movie for myself was uh, during during the, the the process of making it, which was really exciting. All right, Isa, will men always be threatened by strong women? Um, no, I, I mean I don't think necessarily that's the case. I know a lot of men that are not threatened by strong women. Um, I think it's it, it kind of depends on on the man, and it kind of depends on you know his own maybe perceptions of of what it means to be a woman. All right, so Dan, I, it was really great to be a part of the first screening of Cam, and uh, the guy next to me uh, was actually commenting how I was like physically like curling up for large portions of the movie. So I was wondering, what did you get out of the experience of watching it at Fantasia with uh, the audience for the first time? I mean, it was thrilling. It was so exciting. Um, it was so it was moving, you know, and also just watching the audience react to some of the more violent scenes um, was really fun. And it was just, it was very overwhelming, but really, really exciting. I think cool audiences, like, ev- oh, like yeah. everyone was so engaged and so excited. It was really, really fun. So your parents were there too. How did they react to it? Uh, they, they all loved it. Huh. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, my, my, as I said, my, you know, my, my, my parents had, had read the script. My, my, they were on set. They were extras in the Mexican restaurant scene. Um, but they, they hadn't seen a frame of the movie. Um, and so it was really great kind of, you know, having refused to show them anything for a year and a half and then, you know, having the opportunity 
opportunity to be like, bam, finished film, world premiere, what do you think? Uh-huh. Um, and my mom actually said the exact same thing. She was like, I, I, I found myself curled up in a ball. Um, and I didn't even know how I got there. Um, and I think that that's also like, just separately one of the really fun things about the movie is that I think it, it ramps up really slowly to the point where where it's it's not until the the end that you feel like you can finally breathe. Yeah. It was my favorite uh new movie at the festival. For sure. I saw seventeen, that was oh, my thank favorite. You yeah. So much, man. So much. Yeah, I'm 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 I would have really championed this movie for a long time. But uh I'm gonna let you go. I wish you all the luck at such a young age and I believe you guys you guys are gonna make a major splash in this industry. Oh, thank you so much. All right, you guys take care.